Hey, welcome to the channel. Um, I'm Fujin Fox, and this is part one of my Yoshimitsu guide. Uh, I want to start off by kind of introducing myself a little bit um, and introducing Yoshimitsu as a character. Right? Uh, I've played Yoshimitsu for a number of years now. Um, he was my first real dedicated main in Tekken 7. Um, and I played him solely for probably about three years, maybe a little more, but probably around the three year mark um, before I switched over to trying out Kazuya and a lot of Mishima stuff and, and trying to really play like basic fundamental Tekken. Um, but with Tekken 8, Yoshimitsu was so fun in this. Uh, it's been hard to not want to play him all the time. Um, so I find myself often picking Yoshimitsu uh, every time I turn the game on. Um, I just can't get enough. So um, a lot of people have liked my gameplay that I released, and some people ask me for a guide. Um, helping new players is something that I really enjoy doing with Tekken, and I've helped uh, quite a number of my friends uh, get better at Tekken and learn Tekken in general and just kind of how the game works so I'm hoping that I can do that a little here today for you um, especially if you are here to learn how Yoshimitsu works um, I think Yoshimitsu you know he's classified as a tricky character and um, people say that he's really hard to learn and, and he is more challenging than a lot of characters on the roster to learn that is true a lot of his moves um, excel in certain situations um, and in other situations become very lackluster and and you really have to understand when those situations arise which moves you should be using and and I'm really hoping that my guide here today will help ease the pain of that a little bit and kind of guide you through this process on decision making for these moves and and when these moves really shine right um now yoshi does have a lot of crazy stuff right and when, when you think yoshi you're thinking of <laughs> flea stands and helicopters and you know unblockable stuff and um while I will definitely dive into that stuff. Um, I think to play Yoshimitsu really well, you you need a really strong fundamental backbone of this character. Um, and Yoshi has a great set of fundamental tools um, that once you really know how those work, they really facilitate his crazy stuff um, when when you match up with an opponent and they see that you're playing Yoshimitsu they're expecting all the crazy stuff right um, and when you lock them down with pure fundamentals and they don't know what else to do so they freeze and then you come in with you know dragonfly uh, Kensho mix-ups all this stuff they're going to melt down right in front of you. Um, so that's my goal here today. Uh, part one of the video or part one of the guide will be to really break down Yoshimitsu's uh, strong neutral pokes, a uh, little bit of getting into his pressure and kind of his game plan, right? Um, Yoshimitsu really excels at baiting opponents into making the wrong decisions whether that means thinking it's their turn or thinking you want to hang back and heal when you actually are ready with a really solid keep out move um, Yoshimitsu I think plays best when you play him like a thief right when you really trick the opponent into being comfortable in a certain situation or being comfortable thinking that they're in a certain scenario um, and then pulling the rug out from under them uh, with something wild uh, or something unexpected 
Um, and that's really what makes a character fun, right? You really feel like you have to use these tools that are at your disposal to outsmart your opponent. Um, and I think that's what makes Yoshimitsu so great. Uh, so, if you'll join me, I will uh, show you some Yoshimitsu. Alright, first up we have the one jab, single jab, plus eight on hit, uh, plus one on block. Uh, you can start offense with any character in the game with a single jab. Uh, this is one of the most important moves in Tekken. Right, single jab. Um, if it's blocked, you can backstep, try and force a whiff, you can sidestep. Um, if it hits, you can pretty much do anything. Plus eight, alright. If they want to press, you can launch them. Um, you can mix them up if they want to respect you. This is like the backbone of a Tekken offense. Uh, next up we have 2-2. Two, two. Um, this move is fantastic. Uh, a little slower than Tekken 7 at 11 frames. I believe Tekken 7 was still 10 frames, but uh, regardless, uh, this puts you in no sword stance on hit um, or on block. Um, it automatically transitions, but on hit, you get a ridiculous plus 15, right? Minus 1 on block, plus 15 on hit. Um, that's insane. Uh, Yoshi probably has some of the best jab punish strings in the game. Um, plus 15. The opponent can't move after that, right? Um, you also have the option of 2-2-1-2 two, two, two to go into Kensho. Um, and you can mix them up from there. Um, and I'll get into the stances later in a later video. Um, right now, it's just going to be basic pokes, uh, punishes, kind of the backbone to branch everything off of. Um, Alright, next up we have 2-1. Uh, this is not a natural combo um, unless it's a counter hit. Uh, it will uh, be a natural combo on counter. Um, but this is a fast poking string you can throw out. It's safe on block. Um, the follow-up is in mid, and more importantly, if you get the opponent to respect this, or if they know about this, um, you can hold back to cancel the second hit. Um, this is just good for throwing people off, right? Yoshimitsu is all about throwing people off um, when it gets down to tense situations and someone's about to die you can really catch people off guard with this, you know. Throw, uh, put them in a throw, put them in a mix-up situation before they realize uh, what's happened, you know. Um, or sidestep and launch them. Next up we have down forward one. Uh, another key move to any offense in Tekken. Uh, Yoshimitsu's isn't the best uh, with the frames, um, but it the frames play into Yoshimitsu's game plan, um, and I will explain that when I start going over Flash um, and how Yoshi operates with Flash and frame data. Um, but it's still a down forward one. Uh, this move is <laughs> not very sexy, but it's great. Just like the single jab, um, this opens up a lot for your offense. There's follow-ups, down forward, uh, one, two. Um, you know, uh, an opponent needs to respect this. Um, on block, you can sidestep afterwards at minus four. You still have plenty of options. You can backdash. Um, it's a, a good opponent is going to respect your down forward one. Um, and if they want to press, you counter hit them. Right. Uh, down forward one is important to any game plan in Tekken. Uh, use this move a lot. Uh, if you think your opponent wants to duck on you, 
um, if you're trying to kind of inhibit their movement or uh, stop a mix-up, you know, stop fake pressure, down for it more. Alright, next I want to talk about um, the follow-up to the down forward one, which is the down forward two string. Um, this is a um, natural combo on counter hit um, for a whopping 14 plus 14. Um, if it hits by itself, uh, you get this knockdown and you get a free follow-up. Sorry, there we go. Um, oh god. You can get that forward one plus two follow-up uh, for free, uh, which is really good. Now the downside of this um, string is that, uh, one, it's not a natural combo. Um, but that does play into his flash game plan, which again I will talk about later. Um, a good opponent will know that they can duck this string. Um, and unfortunately, it doesn't mix up with his mid-mid uh, down forward 1-4. Right? This actually jails. Um, and this does not. So an opponent that knows the matchup with Yoshimitsu will know that they can option select this. Um, if they see this down forward one come out, they can duck. And if you do down forward one four, their character will not duck. Um, and they will block the string and be able to punish you. Um, I believe it's minus 13, minus 12 in Tekken 8. Um, so fairly punishable. Nothing terrible, but, you know, you can get bopped for it. Um, and if they decide to duck the two, um, they can punish you, right? Um, so to mitigate this, any time you throw out down forward one, two, you should always be ready to go into stone fist with down back two. Um, this comes out so fast that they will not be able to whiff punish uh, down forward one two if they duck the two. Um, another bonus of this is when you're in stone fist, you can choose how many hits you want to do. You know, uh, if an opponent is expecting a lot, which they usually are from a Yoshi player, you can just do one into a throw and throw them off. Um, you can, you know, do however many you want, um, but the point is you're safe after this, right? Minus nine, you might have to hold a mix-up, but you're not going to get launched for it. Um, whereas if you just do that raw by itself, uh, you might. Now, there's a new follow-up in Tekken 8 where you can do down forward one, two, one. Um, but this is minus 12. Uh, you might catch someone in the low ranks with this that doesn't know about that third follow-up. Um, but if you want to be safe, you know, if we're talking about safe poking, um, just be prepared to go into stone fists uh, on whiff. Um, even on hit if you're just trying to confuse them a little bit, you know. Um, but down forward 1-2 is a good move. It does play into Flash um, and how he uses Flash. Uh, so this isn't without merit. Um, this is a great move to have in your arsenal. Um, and you'll want to be throwing this out. Right? Uh, anytime Yoshi's at minus 4, uh, he can follow up with a 6 frame Flash to trade with a jab punish. Uh, if Kazuya wants to throw a jab after this, I can trade with Flash and uh, get a free back 2-2, back two -two, right? Um, or if we're in heat, we'll launch him. Um, I believe, I, I, I don't know, is heat automatically slower? Is heat Flash automatically slower? Let's see. It is 
is automatically slower. So we won't trade with a jab in heat, uh, but outside of heat, uh, you'll be able to trade with a jab. And uh, yeah, excellent, excellent move. Excellent way to get into heat. You throw down forward one, two, they think it's their turn. You know, boom, slap them with that. Alright, down forward two. Yoshi is blessed with down forward two. Uh, an old school now, I guess, is an old school move. A generic down forward two. Um, it's safe on block. And launches uh, on normal hit if they're standing. Um, it won't launch someone that's crouching. Um, but in Tekken 7 you get plus four. Uh, this is invaluable, uh, especially in the low ranks, right? In the low ranks, when people are just mashing and they're doing all this crazy stuff, you know, man, you just wait, be patient, throw one of these out, get a combo, right? Uh, you got frame advantage, plus five, down forward one on hit. 15 frame down for two trade with a jab you'll launch them uh, if you're playing and you're jab checking you get a jab on hit down forward two uninterruptible uh, they want to disrespect your frame advantage if you think that they are the type of opponent that wants to press buttons uh, and they're just trying to play by themselves uh, show them that they got to play a two-player game, right? Launch them. Next we have down forward four. This is an incredible move, um, an incredible mid-check. Uh, when you want to throw out a really safe poke, um, if you want to make sure that your opponent isn't going to press a button, um, this move right here down forward four on block is safe plus seven it has incredible pushback uh, I don't want to say you're back to neutral here at tip range you know on block but um, you might be able to catch someone stepping in if they step in with a really slow move you might be able to catch them um, on a hit you get a ton of space um, I wish it was reversed, but it is what it is. Now, on hit, you get a ton of space, plus four. You can reach them from there, right? If they step in on hit with that, hit them with this. Uh, especially after a back dash, it's insane, right? The follow-ups and the offense you can build from a defensive check is really good, right? Um, it's a great keep out tool. It has great range. Right? It's just a great mid check. Uh, 12 frames fast, which is insane. Probably, I don't know how many, if any, mids are faster than 12 frames in Tekken. Um, invaluable tool. Um, use it for keep out. Use it for people that like to mash. Get your turn back. Um, if you think that they're, you know, if you go up against a character, uh, especially on low ranks where they're uh, doing some moves, like a Laris player uh, does, you know, some bullshit into stance, right, uh, on block, slap him with that. It's not his turn anymore. He's not blocking, he's in stance, right? Um, this move's great. Use it as much as you can. Uh, make space with it. Test your opponent. Uh, excellent. You know, jab, down forward one, down forward four. Right. You can play an entire game uh, with these moves here. Right. And then throw in a low, which we'll get to the lows here in a few. One really great poke. Uh, excuse me. One really great poke that I think every Yoshi player should be using, especially in Tekken 8, is 4-4-3, four, four, uh, plus 5 on regular hit. Um, if you go into Kencho, it's plus 12. 
which means 443 Kincho 2 Kincho forward 2, sorry is a natural combo uh, safe on block, hella safe at minus 4 um, and you can actually go into Kincho on block for plus 3 which again makes uh, Kincho forward 2 and Kincho 1 plus 2 uninterruptible. You'll catch a lot of people with this on block. They'll think it's their turn after blocking that chunky hit because of the animation. But you'll be in Kincho and you'll do forward 2 and you'll get a heat engager off of it, I promise. Alright, we're actually on the lows right now, so um, right now, first up we have down 4. Um, this very unattractive low is incredible. The range is super good. Um, the speed is also amazing, 12 frames. Nobody's reacting to this. Um, minus 4 on hit. And while that looks terrible on paper, this plays in exactly to what Yoshimitsu wants to do, which is to bait the opponent. Um, nobody likes getting hit with this low, I promise you. You go online and you start throwing this thing out every now and then, your opponent is going to lose their mind. There is something about this low that drives people batty. Throw this thing out. They're going to rush in, flash. Six frame flash, trade with their hitbox, right? I do it all the time. Um, if it's blocked, it's launch punishable. But like I said, nobody's reacting to this. Um, you know, don't get predictable with it. And like every time you do a down forward one, you throw this out, right? Don't do something like that. But... Uh, this is uh, an incredible keep out tool. Uh, it's an incredible way to check your opponent's feet. Um, you know, and it's an incredible way to promote aggression from the opponent, which is really, really what Yoshimitsu wants to do. They want the opponent to overcommit uh, so you can launch them for it, um, or so you can <laughs> move out of the way and hit him in the side or in the back. Um, you want the opponent to not think and just act on pure emotion uh, so you can capitalize on that. Our next low is down back four. Um, this is a nice standing low, 17 frames, you know, reasonably fast. Uh, he he kind of steps in when he does it, uh, so good range. Uh, minus one on hit, but you know, that's basically neutral. You still have all your movement options um, You can choose to you know high crush low, uh, Yeah, sorry high crush, uh, you know back dash step out of the way Hell you can throw out a jab um, You still have your turn after this um, but it's a good way just to get some damage in during a little bit of a stalemate, you know, if you guys are kind of jockeying back and forth, doing this stuff, uh, and nothing's really getting through, you know, throw out one of these. Um, it's unseeable, you know, the animation especially, he kind of moves his whole body, and there's a lot of stuff that, you know, Yoshi's doing that this could be, so... Um, throw this out, out every now and then, absolutely fantastic low. And now we have down back three. Uh, this is a high crushing low, puts you in crouch. Um, you can choose to spin however many times you want. Only the first two hits combo. After that, the opponent can block. Um, and it is hella launch punishable. Um, so this move you almost always want to cancel into while standing four times. Um, this keeps you safe. Nobody's going to launch you for it. Um, they cannot interrupt that transition. 
um, and if they try they can get wall splatted or knocked down for it so these new strings that Yoshi got off of uh, standing three are incredible uh, they're new to Tekken 8 they are so awesome for him to have um, they are not without their weaknesses uh, but they are very good 3-1 is uh, obviously a heat engager um, excellent excellent move now it is uh, mid high um, and you automatically go into dragonfly stance um, but you're at plus seven when you get into this stance on block um, on hit uh, you know when when you're already in heat you can obviously you can choose to uh, launch, um, oh actually you can't launch because you're going to to dragonfly but um, plus 18 <laughs> the opponent can't do anything right um, now that being said uh, when you get into this on block, um, the opponent is in a bit of a mix-up situation. But Yoshi, you know, you as a Yoshi player, you are also in a mix-up situation. Uh, the opponent can duck, right? Yoshi's only uninterruptible moves at plus seven in Dragonfly are gonna be uh, forward one plus two at uh, I believe this comes out in 12 frames oh 16 frames right so at plus 7 um, you're uninterruptible uh, with the 16 frame move um, and also uh, just uh, 2 right? dragonfly 2 it's also 16 frames both of these moves are high so they can be decked um, but if you think an opponent wants to press when you go into Dragonfly on block, um, you're going to have to use one of these or else they'll be able to jab you out of the air. Um, and you don't really have enough time. Like if they want to jab you out of there, you don't have enough time to decide uh, whether you're going to go high or mid. Right? Um, so... It's important to know what you want to do and have a read on what your opponent's reaction is going to be before you throw 3-1 out. Um, especially if you know it's going to get blocked, right? Um, if they're an opponent that likes to press, especially at low ranks, who probably don't know at all that this is plus for you, um, you can launch them with 2-4, right? Uninterruptible. They can't stop this from happening if they try and press, if you're fast enough. Um, if they're against the wall or something, and you want a you know, wall spot, forward one plus two, I believe is a wall spot move. Um, that move's really good. Um, also, I'll just throw this in there. Uh, forward one plus two out of Dragonfly is a great approach tool. Um, you can get into Dragonfly really fast and just fly at them like that. Uh, great approach tool. Just be wary. It is a high. But uh, I'll get into the stance stuff um, in its own separate video. Um, but right now know that 3-1 uh, is a great move to throw out. Um, especially if your opponent isn't going to duck that high. Man, this move is free. You throw it out all day long. Um, it's also a great whiff punisher. It's got really good range on it. Uh, that kick has a step forward there. Uh, really really good the whole move is pretty linear but um, you know if you throw out that down forward four that we talked about earlier and they step into this you know they're getting mixed uh, people want to duck this this high throw this does a nice chunk of damage um, and it is unbreakable right a good opponent knows that this is one of your best options out of dragonfly and when they realize that you're flying, um, they know that you're going to want to do that through. Um, so again, your high options here uh, are uh, Dragonfly 2 um, into 2-4 to launch. Uh, Dragonfly forward 1 plus 2. 
right? Both of those are uninterruptible. Um, if they start respecting uh, both of those options, if they realize that you're going to hit them every time they press when you go into Dragonfly, um, that's when you want to throw this up. Right? Uh, but eventually, that's going to make them duck. Okay? Um, and then that's where Dragonfly 4 comes in. Heat Engager, like I said, Launcher if you're already in Heat. Excellent move. Um, so 3-1 really great move uh, really really great if your opponent decides that they uh, are going to duck the 3-1 so that you end up here airborne uh, without your plus 7 uh, you want to mix them up with 3-2 right if they can recognize that first kick or if you're getting predictable with your 3-1 usage you want to throw out 3-2, mid-mid. It is minus 12, so unsafe on block. But you have this really gnarly 1 plus 2 follow-up. Um, if they know about that follow-up, they are probably not going to gamble and press on this 3-2. They're just going to block it and let you have it. A good opponent probably will anyway. Um, uh low level opponent, you know, a low rank opponent, they're, they're going to press right here. That's a really long delay. Um, they're going to think it's their turn. They're going to press into that. Um, but a low level opponent is also not going to be ducking your 3-1 uh, high, right? They're not going to duck that second high hit. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, but once you start getting into like red ranks... You might run into someone who's played some Yoshimitsu. They might know a little bit of this new matchup. Um, and they're going to be ready to duck that, right? So to make them respect it, you're going to throw out 3-2. Um, if the 2 hits a crouching opponent, the 1 plus 2 follow-up is guaranteed. Um, and uh, this knocks down, right? Um, in fact, what I'll do is I will set the dummy to uh, block the first hit and crouch the second hit as if he was going to duck the second hit of 3-1, right? So those uh, second, second uh, and third hits will land uh, for <laughs> a serious chunk of damage. Um, and if they're at the wall, you're talking about a wall break, wall splat, this new wall explosion thing they got going on. Um, you're going to get a combo extension um, from making them respect that. So, excellent way. Uh, just know that if um, they block it, you want to stop at the second hit. Um, unless you're like still in green ranks, uh, you just want to make a habit of stopping at that second hit. Unless they start pressing into it, right? If they start pressing into the second hit because they know you're going to stop there, then you can make them respect that too. It's all about the mind games with Yoshi. Yoshi builds um, a lot of mind games off of whether he decides to do the follow-ups uh, or not, right? Um, so... We'll get into that later uh, when I get into his stand stuff and his full crouch game and, and kind of how all that works. But um, just know that uh, you can make them respect 3-1, the second hit of 3-1, with 3-2. Uh, and you can re make them respect 3-2 with 3-2, 1 plus 2. 4-3, right, I believe this is Yoshi's fastest tracking move. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. But uh, this is a high. Um, safe on block at minus 9. Um, 16 frames, pretty fast. Um, a lot of characters have like a 17, 18, 19 frame tracking move. So 16 frames is pretty good. Um, someone could theoretically step and duck. Um, but you can also track with uh, a forward four, which is a mid, um, which is the next move on the list. But 
So no, both of these moves, if someone's stepping on you a lot, you know, if they're doing like down forward one step, jab step, uh, you can make them stand still with forward three and up forward four. Like both of these moves are really, really good um, to make people respect uh, where you're at and your space control. Um, so throw these out every now and then, especially once you start breaking into the higher ranks. And now we have up for one. Um, this is a nice little poke to throw out, uh, especially if your opponent's using a lot of lows. This will counter hit launch them. Um, it's a little slow at 24 frames, but it does low crush. Um, you see I Musician like do up back one quite a bit and just catch people trying to run in on him um, or people getting too aggressive at the end of a round uh, he uses that quite a bit I think this is a great move um, I think this move really shines against uh, Victor Right, Victor's doing down back four if you guys are coming across a Victor and they're using a lot of their uh, lows down four, down back four and they're trying to score those those low counter hits you know, have this in your back pocket and be ready to throw this out um, I believe in Tekken just about every jumping move gets off the frame or sorry, gets off the ground in ten frames um, so you know if you were to do this at the same time Victor were to throw one of those counter hit lows, um, you'll be fine. You'll be in the air in time before they hit you. Um, you even have some wiggle room there. So this is great if you have a read on a low, if you have a read on just someone trying to come in, you know, it's safe. It's a counter hit launcher. It's really safe. Minus four. You can <laughs> step after. Uh, you can back dash. Like, um, this is great. You know, anytime you can spin or jump with Yoshimitsu, uh, it's going to add mental stack to the opponent. Um, they don't want to see Yoshi <laughs> doing stuff like this, right? Jumping around. Uh, it's great. So, up forward one, excellent move to throw out. Up forward two uh, is the next poke we have. It's very slow, um, but if you use it sparingly, it will catch people. Um, especially going back to what I was just saying about, you know, Yoshi jumping around, doing all this stuff. Uh, this will absolutely catch people. Um, if you think that your opponent um, is good enough to react to this, you can cancel with by holding down after you input a forward two um, and sometimes you can even catch them ducking right they're, they're gonna duck to block it you can catch them like this uh, or you can do something a little faster uh, you know you can play around with it you can go into full crouch um, he's got a lot of options right Yoshi always has some options to play with um, so like I said a little slow uh, just something that you might want to kind of throw out if uh, you're going up against someone who's turtling pretty hard and um, Or it's the end of the round and you need like something kind of cheeky to throw out there um, Just to get a win. Um, that's pretty sizable damage, you know uh, So great move to have great move to try and trick the opponent with you know um, Just keep it in your back pocket man. Yoshi's all about the moves in his back pocket, right? Down for a 3 1. Uh, I absolutely love this string. Um, you can choose to do the first hit just by itself, which is very safe on block at minus 4. Plus 4 on hit. Has incredible range. Uh, so I wouldn't call it a whiff punisher necessarily, um, but it can keep people from stepping in. And what's really great about this move is between the first and second hit Yoshi is actually considered in full crouch um, so you can if your opponent starts respecting the second hit um, 
you can really kind of do some funky stuff, right? Um, while standing forward into Kincho, into a Kincho move, um, you can go into a full crouch. This is incredibly lethal in no sword stance, which I'll get into in a later video, but no sword stance has his full crouch sweep for a launch. Um, so this is very nasty to do to somebody when they're expecting the mid, right? Um, another thing is you could just spend a couple rounds only throwing that out by itself if you wanted, right? Um, because the second hit on counter will actually launch them, right? Uh, so this is a really tricky string. Um, the second hit even kind of hides behind him a little bit, so a lot of people will will press into that second hit. Um, but if they start respecting it, you can really do some, you know, some funky stuff to him. Um, this is a great move against a turtle, right? If I'm going against someone who's being really defensive and it's going to let me throw out a 17 frame mid, um, if they're worried about, you know, they're about to die. Uh, you can really just kind of play around with them with this uh, down forward 3-1, right? Um, you can also, this isn't going to catch many people, but you can also hold one uh, for an unblockable hit. Um, this is really slow, and you have to have your opponent pretty terrified of you, but um, you can hold it for as long as you want. Um, also, if you have an opponent who's good and they know about the unblockable, you can hold it to go into it and then quickly hit back back and cancel it. Right? Um, they might throw out, you gotta be fast, but they might throw out an unsafe launcher or something uh, to try and catch you. Uh, or maybe a, a duckable high string, you know, a lot of people, if they see an unblockable, they'll, they'll quickly uh, throw out a, a jab string to catch them. Um, you know, you could duck that and launch it. You know, uh, the world's your oyster, right? So, um, point is, down 4 to 3 1 is a wealth of options. Um, if you need to make something happen, down forward 3 1 is your friend, right? 3 slide 4 is amazing. This is your get in tool. You need to get in to make something happen with your down forward 3 1. You are coming in with 3 slide 4. This is safe at minus 6. Uh. A slower follow-up can be caught with flash. Um, it transitions to dragonfly, although I would only, I would make a habit of only doing that in combos. Um, on block, uh, you know, this is plus five, but nothing you have is uninterruptible in dragonfly at plus five. Every option at plus five can be jabbed out of and you can be floated um, so unless your opponent doesn't know that you can transition which could happen um, and you know I guess it will happen in some of the lower ranks but once you start getting into like yellows oranges um, you know definitely reds they're gonna know that you can go into that so in neutral try not to transition Try not to build that into your muscle memory, um, but just know that if you need to get in, this is your get in tool. It tracks incredibly well because of that second hit. Um, this moves very hard to step. This is an amazing move, amazing move. Uh, use this uh, anytime you're ready to be offensive or you need to get in and make something happen. Sidestep 4 took a bit of a nerf from Tekken 7, um, but still an amazing move. Uh, zero on block, absolutely neutral. Um, a lot of your opponents 
will not know this. Um, so you can jab check them afterwards, get your turn back, try and go for a counter hit. Um, what's great about this move is it transitions to Kensho. Um, oh gosh. So you can actually chain chain these. Uh, let me set him to block. Uh, with Kencho 4, it's the exact same move, um, but when you do go into Kencho, you get plus 3. Uh, down back 1, 2. Um, this is a really slow low, but the animation is really obscure, um, and you're going to catch a lot of people with this. You can always stop at the first hit and maybe go for a full crouch mix, which again is really dangerous and no sword stance because of the sweep. Um, but it is a natural combo. It does really good damage. Um, you'd be surprised, even though this starts up in 26 frames, uh, which is seeable uh, to a trained eye, you'd be surprised how often this will hit. Um, now, if they do block it, it is unsafe. Um, oh, sorry, it's a natural combo. Let's do block all. Yeah, it's minus 13, so it is unsafe. But again, um, if you see them block, you can delay it. You can kind of confirm. Uh, you know, whether they're going to block it or not. Uh, or you might be able to catch them without delay. Um, but just know, you, just like down 4-3-1, um, you can stop here and get some options here. You know, whether you want to go into while standing or kind of mix them up from a full crouch thing, which, again, we'll get to uh, in a later video. One, uh, this is another uh, spin series. You can do it up to five times uh, before you pass out five or six times um, this move is great it's a high you can get three hits before the opponent can block it um, but when they do block it you are mad plus plus four plus five if they block this the fifth hit I believe um, and minus 73 if you pass out so don't do that um, but just know that this on block is great. Um, throw this out. Do a couple spins. They can't duck um, until the fourth spin. Um, everybody thinks it's their turn after this. So. New to Tekken 8 uh, is up back 1 plus 2. This is a, kind of a slow mid. But what it lacks in range, I mean in speed, it makes up for in range, especially in no sword stance, which uh, in Tekken 8, you're going to be spending a lot of time in no sword stance. Uh, I think I will start off my uh, next video about stances with no sword stance because it's so important. Um, but this is an excellent keep out tool. Um, even in single sword stance, uh, up back 1 plus 2, if the opponent wants to get in, if you're out here dancing around, healing, uh, and they rush in, you can smack them with this, um, especially with the NSS version. Next on the list of keep out is forward 1 plus 2. Uh, this move is also really, really good. Um, Better still in no sword stance. Tons of range. You can hit from like range three with this thing. Absolutely insane. Launcher and heat. You know, uh, heat engager outside of heat. Um, also a little slow at 20 frames, but for a keep out tool, um, this is great. I think it might be a little too slow for a solid whiff punish. Um, and it is unsafe on block at minus 12. Another poke we have is uh, sidestep 1. Um, it's a safe counter hit launcher. Plus 2 on hit. Launches on counter hit. Uh, safe on block at minus 9. Um, excellent thing to throw out when you're moving around and kind of testing 
whether the opponent uh, uh, wants to attack and and good range too. You know, you can you can catch some of the stuff in it from from quite a ways away. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily call this a keep out tool, um, but it can be used in that capacity. Um, but just know that excellent way to um, catch the opponent off guard. But real quick, I want to go over his power crush moves. Uh, forward 4, 18 frames. Um, unsafe on block like most power crushes, but in Tekken 8, if you absorb attacks during a power crush um, and they happen to block it, you're safe. I think they, the frame data can change, but you, the point is you're safe. Um, if you absorb attacks and they end up blocking it. Uh, his other power crush is forward 3 plus 4. This puts you in flee. Um, you also get guaranteed flee 2 follow up. Um, or you can flee 1 and roll off the sword for Oki, depending on what you want to do. Um, it's important to note though that uh, Flee 3 plus 4 near the wall will actually cause Yoshi to stun himself. Um, and that can put you in a bad situation. Um, so just know that uh, if you're near the wall, you might want to be using forward 4 more. Um, and I think just in general, if you're close up, forward 4 is the way to go. It's much faster than forward 3 plus 4 um, by 3 or 4 frames. Um, and again, if, if you're near a wall, which in Tekken 8 happens a little less, but it does happen, uh, forward 3, 4 can really put you in a bad situation if you stun yourself on the wall. Um, but a good thing about forward 3, 4 is its range. You know, this hits from very far away. Um, if you know that opponent is just itching to get in um, and you're willing to throw out something kind of big, 4-3-4 uh, four, four will make a lot of people mad and can really set up some opportunities for you. So, excellent move. Just a different use case like most of Yoshi's stuff. Um, again, he's a very situational character and you kind of got to get used to which moves are going to be best in which situation. Um, which hopefully I'm shedding a little bit of light on. Real quick, I want to talk about Yoshi's throws. Uh, Yoshi doesn't have a complete throw game. That's another weakness of his. Um, he does have uh, command throws with rainbow drop, which is up forward 1 plus 2 for the easy input. Um, or I believe it's a quarter circle forward back. I can't remember the old input for it. Uh, it's been been too long, but... Um, his other command throw is a uh, quarter circle forward two, which will steal some health um, and give it to you unless the opponent breaks it. Uh, then he will take health from you. But just know both of these throws are one plus two breaks. Um, and then he has his generic throws. So that's all your opponent's going to have to guess between if they're good at breaking throws then you're not going to catch them with many um, so just know that going into playing this character um, but his command throw is fantastic um, and being able to steal health is never bad
Hey, thank you so much for watching. Um, in the next video, where I'm going to go over stances, uh, we're going to learn how to take all the stuff in this video and branch out from it and start doing Yoshimitsu's crazy mix-ups um, and learning how to confuse the hell out of the opponent. Um, I'm really excited about that. Just got to kind of figure out how exactly I want to tackle it. Um, but again, thank you. Thank you for the recent support. Um, before Tekken 8, you know, my channel had 25 subscribers and now I'm at almost 350. Uh, and it's just incredible um, to see. So um, I really appreciate um, all of you being a part of this uh, journey. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see where Tekken 8 takes us. But I hope you look forward to the next video. And, uh, yeah.